This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 882, Mindful Money, by Ira Israel of iraisrael.com. And I'm Dan, I'm your host and your narrator, bringing you some of the best blogs on personal finance in podcast form. Hope you're having a great week so far. Before we get to the post, I want to thank creditrepair.com for their support. They are dedicated to helping you develop a healthier relationship with your credit. Removing questionable negative items is one of the fastest ways to increase your score, and creditrepair.com will help you do that. They make rebuilding your credit as smooth as possible by using tools like mobile apps, email and text alerts, and more. And they understand that credit scores are not just a number, it's a lifestyle. This is something we hear about on this show frequently, and recently, in fact. So let creditrepair.com help you rewrite your credit story. Head over to the link in our show notes to sign up today for a free 15-minute credit analysis. For now, let's get right to our post for today as we start optimizing your life. Mindful Money by Ira Israel of iraisrael.com Quote, A man is a success if he gets up in the morning and gets to bed at night, and in between, he does what he wants to do. Bob Dylan At various times during my life, I've been relatively wealthy and relatively impoverished, and neither one has particularly appealed to me. But the psychology of money, how our minds relate to all of those bank statements and credit card bills, dollar signs and numbers, has always fascinated me. Ask yourself, Do I have a scarcity mentality and live in constant fear of not having my basic daily survival needs met, like the 3.5 billion people on planet Earth who live on less than $1.50 per day? Or do I believe that the universe is wonderfully abundant and forces are conspiring to ensure that I thrive? Is there a gray area in between these two extremes, or does one's personal paradigm shift over time as he or she gains and loses money? There are different ways to relate to numbers, T. Harv Eker observes that middle-class people think in terms of salaries, while wealthy people think in terms of net worth. Similarly, UPenn professor Paul Fissell, in his book Class, A Guide Through the American Status System, claims that colors correlate with social class. Just think of the color choices you get at a BMW or Porsche dealership as opposed to a Kia or Hyundai dealership. And if Harvard Law professor Lonnie Guineer's research in The Tyranny of the Meritocracy democratizing higher education in America is correct, then it seems as if SAT scores are better indicators of family income than of scholarly aptitude. For example, family income of zero to $20,000 has an average SAT score of 1326. 40,000 to 60,000 has an average of 1461. 100 to $120,000 has an average of 1569, and more than $200,000 has an average of 1714. You can see the full chart in this post, by the way. I recently met two young female budding entrepreneurs who each separately exclaimed, I want to make a lot of money. After the vomit subsided from my esophagus, I looked inside myself to inquire as to why I find such languaging to be crass, vulgar, gauche, and lacking grace and dignity. Already I can envision comments asking, what's wrong with making money? To which I would reply, Nothing, as long as your personal identity isn't merely an amalgamation of material possessions and numbers. The way I would express a similar sentiment would be, I desire more freedom, ease, opportunities, and options. One of the two aforementioned women happens to be $30,000 in credit card debt at an average annual rate of 12%. I asked her how much she earned from her day job, and she told me that she took home about $900 per week after taxes. I told her, okay, pick any month of the year. January, February, March, April, May, it doesn't matter. And know that every day during that month, you will drive to work and sit at your desk and 100% of your earnings will go to the banks that loaned you that $30,000. One month of your life every year until you pay it off. Because $3,600 of yearly interest payments equals exactly four weeks that you work for zero income. This is the way I think about money. I think of it in terms of freedom, free time, time to pursue things that inspire me. The second of the two women is friends with several billionaires who apparently use their net worths as measures of success in comparison to their fellow one percenters, like little boys having contests to see who can p*** farther. The mind is analogous to an hedonic treadmill, so when whatever object of desire is acquired, it will soon be replaced by a new one. If a billionaire looks out across one of her majestic properties past the electronic fence disguised as a weathered brick wall, past the surveillance cameras hidden in trees, 
and past the armed sentry's house and notices five Olympic-sized pools on her neighbor's estate, her mind will probably say something like, I can't believe Joan has five Olympic-sized pools and I only have four. Something must be done about this right away. But as soon as this billionaire acquires that fifth pool, then her mind will spy another useless indicator of wealth that she feels she needs to acquire. For money and status are a never-ending game. Enough is never enough to our minds. By the way, I think someone might have once mentioned that it's not great to covet thy neighbor. Do you consider your bank account to be an accurate indicator of your success in comparison to your fellow humans on planet Earth? Well then, bravo, well done, because there are at least 3.5 billion people who survive, barely, on less than what you paid for your cup of coffee or tea this morning. Or do you subconsciously believe that financial worth displays how much or little your God loves you? This would be an inversion of Weber's theory regarding the Protestant work ethic. Previously, people believed that if they worked hard, God would reward them. Then this morphed into the trend of conspicuous consumption with status symbols such as designer labels overtly screaming, look at me, my owner must be rich to be able to afford me, so God must love her. I think that men are even worse than women at constantly measuring their social statuses. Two men meet for the first time and three questions are usually asked. What's your name? Where are you from? and what do you do to earn a living? Watch your mind construct two distinct images when you hear, one, my name is William, I live in Cupertino, and I'm a patent attorney mostly involved with trademark litigation, versus two, Ronnie, Idaho, I drive a truck. Names, cities, and job descriptions all correlate strongly with social class. Scientific studies on happiness prove that once our basic survival needs are met, happiness increases only marginally with higher net worth. So it's interesting that our minds seem to expend so much energy continually tracking our financial well-being. I try to live by the adage, any problem that can be solved by money isn't a real problem. And yet there are financial issues, like the $304 parking ticket I recently received, because such draconian punishment actually functions as a regressive tax, that are so emotionally charged that I will lose sleep for days over them. So how does your mind think and talk about money? You just listened to the post titled Mindful Money by Ira Israel of iraisrael.com. And thank you again to creditrepair.com. You can get a free 15-minute credit analysis with the link in our show notes. Creditrepair.com makes it easy to stay connected to your credit repair journey and help reach the goals you've set. And they do it through a personal online dashboard, credit monitoring, email and text alerts, and other easy-to-use tools that make rebuilding your credit as smooth as possible. They analyze your credit reports and work with you to identify questionable negative items hurting your score. Then they build a custom game plan based on your specific situation. Previous members have seen an average 40-point TransUnion credit score gain during only four months of membership. So let creditrepair.com help you rewrite your credit story. Head over to the link in our show notes to sign up today for a free 15-minute credit analysis. And thank you to creditrepair.com for sponsoring this podcast. And that's going to do it for another edition of Optimal Finance Daily. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Thank you, of course, for listening. And I'll see you right back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.